This is the Expendable, made in Poland by the company Zapas. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this rather large survival style knife, keep watching. Just before we get started, two things. First, I'd like to thank the company Zapas for sending out the Expendable so that I could share it with you. And the second thing is, it's that time of year again. The deer flies are out and they're all over me. So if you see me swatting at myself, you'll understand why. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll just bring the camera in a little closer. We'll focus in on the knife. I'll go over a few specifications as well as its key features. And then of course, I'll do a few demonstrations with it. All right, just before we focus in on the knife itself, let me share with you the sheath that it came with. So simple pancake kydex sheath. You can see there's an aluminum backer on it with a simple little bit of nylon webbing for a belt loop. Functional, maybe. Well, there's a few issues I have or a few concerns I have. On the sheath itself is the grommets, the rivet type grommets, they barely engage the back side of the kydex. It's as if they were a millimeter or two too short, a little bit longer, and it, they, I think they do a better job of holding on to the kydex. Now, that's not a deal breaker as long as the sheath remains functional because I haven't had to come apart on me yet, but is the sheath functional? Well, let's just look at how it slides in. So there's very little retention on this sheath at all. In fact, I'd say, no retention at all. So in my opinion, the sheath is a fail. Now I've looked at this and thought, what could I do to improve the retention on this sheath? And I've had two ideas. I just haven't committed to either. One is to put a pop rivet through here, just above this grommet or rivet right here, just to give it a little bit more tension over the guard of the knife itself. That's one option. And I may do that yet. And if it doesn't work, I'll just take it out again. And the other is some type of a retaining strap that I can take from one side of the knife, come around the back and go over the guard at the top, because there is a bit of a guard in the knife, as you'll see, and hope that uh, that helps to retain the knife in the sheath. As it is, it's really non-functional. Probably the best answer is get a new sheath. But then, of course, you have to ask yourself, is the knife worth having just and building a new sheath for. Well, let's take a look at the knife and we'll see if we can decide that. All right, so we're gonna go through the specifications for the knife first and then I'll go through its design features before we start testing on it. I do need my cheat notes, of course. And overall length is 11 inches, tip to pommel, 280 millimeters. Blade length is six inches, 150 millimeters. Blade thickness, 4.4 millimeters, fairly thick. Weight is 10.69 ounces or 300 grams. That's without the sheath. I don't have the weight with the sheath. I'll put that in the specs or in the video description if you're interested. Now the steel, this was interesting to me because I wasn't uh, familiar with it, at least this designation. And I don't think it's gonna show up but right under my finger right here is the Zapaz logo and under that it says NMV so that's the steel NMV so what is NMV well I looked it up and apparently it's an Eastern European designation for what we know in North America is O2 tool steel well that I had some familiarity with so O2 tool steel that's been around for a long time it's a high carbon steel and it's has a good reputation for being very tough. Of course, everything is about the heat treat, and I've been putting this knife through its paces, and we'll talk about its performance, its heat treat, and edge retention, and toughness in a few moments' time. So O2 tool steel. Now, this knife does come in a couple of variations. This one came with an acid stone wash finish. It's attractive. It's functional to a degree. I don't know that it will necessarily prevent rust, but so you do have to treat it like a carbon steel, which it is, and keep it oiled and clean, of course. Brown micarta handles, canvas micarta that is, they're quite attractive and very functional. All right, now let's go into the design of the knife. So it does have a slight drop point, as you can see. The point is well above the center line, but it's not so bad that you couldn't do any drilling with it if you wanted to. High saber grind on it with a secondary bevel. There is uh, marginally, I guess you could call that jimping. It's functional, but it's not something you need to use of, but it's not aggressive and it's not, a, you know, hard on your hand or anything else. So I guess it's functional enough is what we'll say. A minimal guard right here, which is probably something which makes sense on a knife of this style, being a large survival knife, and a good size sharpening, sharpening stone right here. The scales are held on with Allen screws, so that should be easy enough to take off if you need to for whatever reason. There is a lanyard hole and of course that a little tiny piece of orange paracord on it. 
Overall, it's an attractive design. The handle is, okay, so it's not especially thin. You can see that they're slab-sided, but or especially thick. It's not especially thick. It's quite thin, but it's slab-sided. But it does have enough height through here that it still remains comfortable in my hand. There's not a lot of extra room on the grip itself, but there does feel like I have good control over it. Now, I am going to do a few demonstrations, but let's just talk to its performance for a moment. So I have been using this knife, and it, for some some reason it just lends itself for a knife you want to beat on and I've done a lot of that I've split quite a bit of wood with this knife and I've even taken down a couple of small trees with the beaver chew method batoning it in at all as you go around the tree and a lot of cross batoning because it's it just appears to be a knife that it begs to be used hard and I have used it hard and uh, have I had any issues with it well let's say this no chipping but I have had some minor rolls. My, just when I say minor rolls, I look at it and I can see a little bit of a glint. And I'll tell you how easy they were to take care of. I ran it down a ceramic rod and then I couldn't find the rolls anymore. So it's easy to maintain steel. I, I mean, as far as the edge goes. And then I dropped it on top of that. So it's been a good performer. It's not a super steel. It's not a super designed knife, but it is very, very functional. And I think it's now time to do a few demonstrations with it. All right, I can see in the viewfinder that uh, there's a lot of shadow being created by the trees here. So hopefully this is showing up nice and clearly. If not, uh, it's about the only place it can work because I also have to be concerned about the wind. But all right, so let's get on with the demonstration. I have a piece of rock maple here. It's about 13 inches in length, uh, just two inches in diameter, well seasoned. All right, let's just see how well this does for batoning. Certainly you can span the piece of wood easy enough. And as long as it stays on my anvil, that is. Rock maple is hardwood. Not quite. There we go. Man, that is hard, hard wood. Okay, it did the job. I and uh, what I'll do now is split the rest of this down, see if I can't pull, uh, pull a few pieces out for making tent stakes with and doing some feather sticking with. All right, I have my wood all quartered. Some of them made a little larger, a little smaller. What I discovered is, is that there were a couple of knots. You can see this, this is not where the knot was, but it was on the other pieces and here as well. So I'm going to turn this one into a feather stick, but uh, I'm not going to be gentle in doing it. I'm actually going to take it and pare it down just a little bit in length. This is probably going to jump because of the way it's laying on the wood, but I want to get rid of that knot on the end, so I'm just going to take it right off with a full-on cross baton. Buried the knife into the wood. Good. Okay. So what I want to do now is create an L7 notch that would be used to hold the guy line. A little bit further. There we go. Maybe a little bit further on the other side. There we go. That should be it. About a third way through the wood. Now I'm wondering if this wood is as dry as it should be. It felt dry before I started splitting it, but the inside of it may be a little damp. But we'll see as we go along. All right, that's probably deep enough. Let's just do a little bit more clean out on the corners, both sides, get rid of that bark. All right, last little bit, more than necessary, but just want to demonstrate does a good job of doing an L7 notch. All right, now let's put a point on the other end. Purpose of this part of the demonstration is to see, just to see how comfortable it is in reverse grip for doing things like using the chest lever to put a point on a stick. Uh, gonna be hard. I can tell that now just because of the hardness of the wood. Well, 
the knife is definitely doing its bit, but in nice and deep. All right, I think my lesson here is this is not the wood I would choose for making 10 pegs out of, certainly not expedient ones that I just was trying to get made in a hurry. <clears throat> but it's the wood I have, so it's the wood I work with. All right, that's enough of a point to make a 10 peg out of it. So here are my first thoughts on this. Not a lot of the time, it's this area of a knife that becomes uncomfortable me for me if the handle is a little bit too short. This isn't, for whatever reason, even though it is a little short or not overly long, we'll say, it's uh, not uncomfortable here. Up here, it is a little bit uncomfortable. And I think, although it's not sharp, that could use a radius right where the guard is. The guard just seems to be wanting to work on my finger a little bit like that. You know, it, that wouldn't even be noticeable in any forward cutting. It's only when you're using it like this in reverse cut that I start to feel the pressure of the edge of that guard. Easy enough for me to do. I think I probably will round that off just to make it a little bit more comfortable to use in that reverse grip. Okay, one more demonstration here would be feather sticking. All right, another one of those splits off of that uh, piece that I had. Straight grained at least. No heartwood. But it is rock maple. So <laughs> I, we won't know until we get going. Let's have a look here. Working down an outside edge of it. I think, oh no, that's better. I was going to say, well, I think what I'm seeing here is that the wood is not as dry as I would like it to be because if the curls are not really curling, Oftentimes the reason is because the wood is not dry, but the wood is curling. It is curling properly. Those were just probably a little bit too deep. Oh yeah, yeah, here we go. Getting some nice long curls. All right, you know, I didn't expect this. All right, that's not a good curl. That is though. I'll just do a couple more and then I'll show you what's happening up close. All right, you can see the curls are quite fine and very functional here. That's enough to catch a spark from a ferrocerium rod. Now, I'd have to do a lot more to make a full-on feather stick with this, but what I'm finding in use is it's, more, it's better than I actually anticipated. Usually a long knife like this is, more, is harder to control. Let's just try it down the other side. But look at that. Where did that guy go? That's what I'm talking about. Look at the curls on this. It's, it's doing a great job of doing curls. Much better than I anticipated. Better than some dedicated bushcraft knives I have. Now maybe I got lucky with a piece of wood that wants to cooperate, but somehow I don't think. All right. I think I've done enough feathering just to show you that it's capable of it. What I want to say about that is that the high saber grind and the fine secondary edge are combining to make a better than average feather sticking knife for this size especially. And the comfort in doing so, well, personally, I would like it to be thicker through here, but that's just my personal thing. Uh, I, I'm not minding it because it's comfortable. It's not uncomfortable at all. It's well radiused all the way around. The guard is still giving me some issues when I have it right up close like this, but not bad. And I think that's easily done with a Dremel tool just around that guard so it doesn't have that sharp 90 degree spine right there. Okay. I was actually more impressed with this as a feather sticking than I had given it credit for before. But what about scraping? Let's see how it does that. All right, let's do a little bit of scraping with the Zapas Expendable. So I have a little piece of birch bark to catch my scrapings on. I'll start with the stick that I was just feather sticking. See what it'll do for scraping some dry wood off of that. And it's doing that just nicely. This is the stuff that'll catch a spark from a ferrocerium rod. If you hit it correctly, we'll just put that aside for a moment. Same thing with this piece of fat wood. Let's give that a go. Maybe like that. Yep, yeah, that's uh, scraping the fat wood well enough. 
All right, now my ferrocerium rod. Looking for a good edge. Get rid of some of that fat wood gum off the back. Interestingly, there's a better edge out here towards the tip than there is back here, probably just from using it so much. Now, that means it's going to be a bit of a challenge to strike into this little pile of fat wood. Uh, my favorite way to use a ferrocerium rod is to plant it and then pump up and down on the ferrocerium rod. Uh, you do have to be careful not to knock everything and make it fly everywhere, but at least it's very accurate as far as directing sparks into whatever pile of, uh, whatever, in this case, fat wood that you want to catch the sparks. Another way is to pull backwards on the knife and, and drive the sparks down. Less risk of smacking things with the knife itself. Yep, I just find it a little bit harder to be accurate with it. A third way I've used quite often with big knives is to lay them down like this, tilt them forward, and then pull the ferrocerium rod across the back of the knife. In this case, though, what I think I'm going to do, get some of the rocks out of the way, is try to use the sharpness of the forward area of the blade, or the spine, that is, and pull backwards. Not easy to do with a long knife because it's just so much material. Yeah, that's not working at all. So, let's try the one with the back of the knife like this. This knife has been like this for me on and off, where occasionally I'll get really good sparks. It's almost as if it's differentially heat treated, and it may be. There's just nothing in the literature. And what that would mean is the edge is harder than the spine, often done to increase toughness of the knife, but it kind of works against you for when you're trying to do exactly what I'm... That's not working well either. Let's try another method. I will try the pump. Least favorite for this type of a setup, but let's just see if I can get it to me. Yeah, this uh, spine, well, it's... Okay, finally. <laughs> All right, I have a few comments about that. It worked, but it wasn't easy, and I'll explain why I believe that's why. All right, I think we've done enough now. We can wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments for the Zappaz Expendable Large Survival Knife. So my overall thoughts is I love to use this. I really do. It just has that feel in my hand of something that you want to use hard, and it will be stand up to the tasks, and it certainly does. I have been, as I mentioned before, as we started this video, I have been really pounding on this knife a lot. I won't say abusing it, but using it hard for a a lot of tasks that other knives you kind of shy away from. Not so much out of fear of damaging them, just yeah, you don't want to mar them if unnecessarily. But this knife just asks to be used hard and it stands up to it. And that's very typical of O2 tool steel. Very, very tough. Not known for the best edge holding. Well, of course, heat treat is all important here. So let's just take a look at it now. After all the use I put it through today, there's certainly no rolling. No chipping, of course. I didn't. Ex I've never seen any chipping on this or any other O2 tool steel knife. You know, it's still sharp, but it could certainly stand being run down a ceramic rod and then stropped before I bring it out the next time, which is what I do anyway when I get home with my knives. Ah, a few thoughts on it. Okay, splitting. It's a good splitter, but I've had better. A saber grind is a better splitter than a full flat grind, but not as good as a Scandi grind. That's just the nature of it, the way it wedges into the wood. So it does a good job of splitting, but I have knives that will split better. So I'll give it a, I don't know, what do you call it, a four out of five? I'm not used to giving number grades to knives during reviews as a splitter. However, when it came to feather sticking, it surprised me. It really did. This did a much better job of feather sticking than I had anticipated based just on the look and the design of it but that's the thing you put a knife in your hands and some of them perform way better than you expect and some of them maybe not as good as you expect for feather sticking this did a really really good job I was quite impressed with that so I really give it some high marks there now when it came to scraping oh um okay so here is the thing it scraped the dry wood well enough and created some very fine curls it scraped the the fat wood well enough 
but it wasn't doing a good job on the ferrocerium rod. And you know what's just funny? Even now, I can feel the burr on the edge of this knife. It actually will catch my fingernail. I was able to get it to work, but you know, it was a struggle. Now, I haven't done any modifications to this knife to increase the spine sharpness, so I may have to go back and do that. And that's something that, you know, is not uncommon for knives, that you have to do a little bit of work to keep the ultimate sharpness on your spine if you want it for scraping that is but I have a theory and I, I'll have to reach out and see if I can get an answer from Zappas or communications have been the haven't been the best and that is whether or not this is differentially heat treated that's a kind of an, an additional feature in heat treats that only you only usually see custom makers or high-end production knives have and that where is where the edge of the knife is brought into a higher hardness than the spine and as a result it can stand to flex a little bit and give some shock absorption to the blade that otherwise if the whole thing was as hard as the edge it may not be able to take that. If that's the case then it means it's a little bit softer at the spine than it is at the edge and therefore it's not going to hold that 90 degrees for a very long time. So I didn't find it scraped my ferrocerium rod. Yeah, you could probably critique my method on this but I tried a number of things with this and yeah I think I do need to do a little work to get it to do a better job at scraping ferrocerium rods. But scraping fat wood and scraping wood, dry wood into shavings, yeah, it certainly worked for that. Okay, all the other tasks of this knife, it certainly stood up to, as I mentioned before. The one thing that I'm going to have to do for sure to get, when I get this knife home is to work on the guard right here, just to radius those inside corners so that it's more comfortable against my finger when I have it either in the forward grip, what grip way up front, or have it in the reverse grip. I can feel it right on my finger up there. And that's about the only negative I can say about this knife. Well, okay, other than the sheath. The sheath really is just a disaster and I'm not sure there's any way to fix it legitimately. You know, I'll try, but I don't think I can make a better sheath out of the one than, it's probably, I'm probably better off just making a new sheath for this knife. And I think that's where this is gonna go. Okay, that's everything I have to say about the Expendable. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. I'll put the links to where you can order this knife from Poland. That's where it's purchased from. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this, $125 Canadian. Not bad, right, for a knife of this quality. Certainly the fit and finish is certain, speaks well of it. Uh, and I'll put all the specifications in the video description as well. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.